Welcome to Dynamics with Danish. Today's topic is build your own custom control. In this video, we are going to look at how to create a simple PCF custom control. I'm going to use an XRM toolbox plugin called PCF Custom Control Builder to speed up the process of building the control. If you have not already downloaded it, then this is the time to do so. We are going to look at how to configure your manifest file for a simple control and also look at how to write code in index.ts. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you would be able to create your own custom control. Let's get started. I'll be starting my control from scratch. So click on new control and select from blank. Here, as you can see, steps are numbered. First step is to run the pack command that will create the PCF project. This project will help you to create the control. To create this project, you have to specify the namespace for your control. In my case, it will be maverick.pcf.controls. And the control name will be navigation. You also have to determine if this control will be applicable for a field or a data set. If you selected field, means it will be displayed on a form. And if data set was selected, means it will be applicable to the views. In my case, I will be using field template. So let's run the pack command. While this is running, I want to debrief you on the control I'm planning to create today. The idea is I will have two buttons named previous and next that would facilitate users to move between tabs. Once the execution is complete, let's move on to step two, which is to develop your control. To do so, you could use any of your favorite coding IDE. I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, which I can open using this button. Here you can see two files, control manifest and index file. Control manifest, as the name suggests, provides you with an obvious information about the control like namespace, control name, description, what property it has, which resources it consumes, and the path for those resources. And last but not the least, I'm going to change the description of the control. It is always a good idea to specify the description so anyone using your control knows what exactly this control does. Next, I'm going to change the property name to current value. I'm going to give the same name to my display as well. And then I'm going to change the description to specify what my what my property would be doing. Next, I'm going to change off type. In my case, I want off type to be whole number. Rest everything I'm going to keep as is. Now, moving on to the index file, there are already some functions pre configured. There's init function, update view get outputs and destroy function. init function is the first function to be invoked when the control is loaded, whereas update view is invoked when the property defined in the control manifest file are changed or when some other control properties are changed. get outputs is called when we invoke controls notify output change method and destroy is called when control is removed. This is used for cleanups. Before we start adding logic into these functions, we want to declare some variables. As you can see, there is no HTML, so we have to use TypeScript to create the UI. To do that, we use HTML element variables. In my case, I would need three elements. One would be the next button, the other one would be the previous button, and the third one would be the space element between the next and the previous. I don't actually need that, 
but just to show some of the features, I want to use it in my demo. Once I declare my variables for the HTML elements, then I need to capture the tab position value. So I need a variable for that as well. This variable would be of type number. Next thing to define is the event listeners. And I would need two of them in this case. One would be on the next button and the other one would be on the previous button. and some local variables as well. Once I have everything declared, let's go to the init function. In the init function, I would be first initializing my notify output changed to my local notify output changed. To configure the button that would act as next, I will be utilizing my next button variable with an anchor tag using document.create function. I will also be setting a class attribute so that I can add some CSS later on. I will also need to add an event listener to the button so that I can do some activities when the button is clicked. Same configuration needs to be applied to the button that will act as previous. Only thing to change will be, it will have a different class name and a different event listener function. Now I will define my space element with a span tag. Next piece of code will add my elements to the container. Lastly, I will add some inner HTML to those elements. Here ends my init, but you will see we have not defined the event listeners and those as well. Once the event handlers are defined, and if you scroll to the init function where we have used the event handlers, the error would have been disappeared. Now let's test the control to see if there are any errors. To do so, we will have to go back to the plugin and build the project. The build was successful. Now let's test the control to see if there are any errors in the UI. To do so, we will be going on, the, on a fourth step to test the custom control. As you can see here, we have an anchor tag with inner HTML specified as previous and another with next. And in between them is a space element. These buttons are not functioning yet. So let's go back to the code and add some logic for that. Let's start with event listeners. Whenever a next button is clicked, I want my input value to increment by one. And if a previous button is clicked, it should be decremented by one. And when that happens, the output should change, which will invoke the update loop. 
So let's invoke the notify output change method as well on the next and previous on click event handlers. So let's go and update the get outputs method. We will be assigning the property value to the input value. Now let's go and update the update view. I'm going to paste the already copied code in the update view and I'm going to explain it line by line to you. First line is to determine whether the property value is defined. If it is defined, then we capture the property value in the input value. If not, then we initialize it to zero. Then we go and capture all the tabs using xrm.page. Because we are using xrm.page, which is not defined in the tag script, you will have to use psignore. Once we have the tabs, let's get the maximum count of the tabs on the form and also assign the minimum count as zero. Based on the input value, we will set the focus of the tab. So if the input value is two, then the tab that would be focused will be the second tab. Also, we will set the value of the current focus tab in CRM using xrm.page. So next time when the user comes back to the record control, we will read the existing value on that attribute and set the tab in focus. Now we have to add the CSS part to make the UI look better. To do so, we will have to go back to the manifest file and add the CSS resource. As we have specified the path as CSS, which is the folder name and the file name is main.css, we will add the folder called as CSS and a file called as main.css. I will be pasting my already defined CSS classes and that should be all that we need on this control. Now, time to test the code. Again, going back to the plugin and running the test. This time I'm going to use one of the quick actions that are defined here to test the project. I'm going to use build and test control quick action. This will build the control and also check for errors if there are any and also test the control after building it. And there it is, a nice looking control. If we click the next button, you can see that the current value changed from zero to one. If I click again, you would see that it incremented by one and now the current value is two. And it would keep on incrementing as I click the next button. If I click the previous button, it would be decrementing as expected. So there you have your own custom control. You can also read my blog on PCF custom controls. You can find the link to the blog in the description of the video. If you find any issues while using PCF custom control builder, or if you have any suggestions, please create an issue or feature request on GitHub. Link is provided in the description of the video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and leave a comment below.